What's up, guys? Coach Bobby here. I just got back from uh, teaching. I'm a, I'm a dual learning professor, ooh, professor at Gavilan College in Gilroy, California, and I teach a personal finance course um, at a high school. So dual dual learning course. Um, and on my way to, to class today, it dawned upon me, and, and it's gonna sound arrogant, I don't mean for it to, but I have a gift that allows me to, to teach and guide young people especially in a way that is, that is unique, I believe, to, to, to me. Um, I think that I have a, the ability to connect to young people, to inspire, motivate, drive, pull, push, prod, uh, get them to, to at least look at, if not want to, or aspire to be the best version of themselves. And as I'm driving, I'm remembering a story I told the class yesterday. And uh, a part of me was stressing over, over finishing up uh, this week's lesson plan uh, because I felt like uh, my story went too long and now I had compressed time period to, to speak to the lesson plan this week. But then it dawned upon me and I, and, and I really, really had to step back and remind myself of my gift and remind myself the importance of what I bring to the table. And so uh, uh, I thought about teaching you guys and telling you guys what I believe are, are the important parts of leadership. So in this video, I'm gonna talk quickly about what I believe to be the most important tenets, the most important principles, the foundation of what I think allows older people to lead younger people. So if you're a teacher, a coach, a parent, uh, a manager, a mentor at a company uh, that is looking to lead people, not just younger, but usually younger, uh, I believe this to be um, a helpful lesson to you. So uh, if you're a sports fan, you can relate to this imagery, right? So uh, oftentimes in, in a game, um, in any sport, for the most part, at the pro level, if an injury occurs to a lower leg, to a shoulder, to an arm, they will initially take that person into the locker room or the facility and do an initial examination. Now, that initial examination usually includes or is predominantly an X-ray, right? An X-ray to, to understand and see if there is a break in the bone in that area, in the lower limb or the arm or the shoulder. Oftentimes, they will not rule out further injury and they will not unequivocally say the player is okay because what they'll often say is uh, barring further examination, this is our, in our initial result, right? So upon further examination, we initially know that the player has suffered no break and that further examination is usually what's called an MRI, MRI. So after the MRI, they can further tell the public or the player or the coaches whether or not that player can continue playing because the MRI will reveal structural damage to ligaments and muscle, right? Things you cannot see in an x-ray where you're looking for breakage of bones. So the initial prognosis of the x-ray does not tell you without, without, uh, without doubt whether or not the player is okay. The MRI gives you that validation. So I'm driving into class today and that same scenario resonated with me on a leadership standpoint. Because many people think leadership is about knowing the product or the company or the skill you're teaching or the course curriculum you're teaching. That's part of it, right? Having knowledge of the thing you're teaching and the thing you're leading on is obviously important. 
obviously. However, that's just the x-ray of leadership. That's just the surface level of leadership. That's just the initial idea, the initial prognosis of leadership ability. What reveals true measure, true validity, true uh, uh, value of leadership comes through an MRI. And you know, Coach Bobby, I always have these acronyms. So in this case, MRI stands for motivation. It stands for uh, uh, relationship building. And then it stands for instruction. So motivation, relationship, and instruction. So in this case, Right by, by doing an MRI on your leadership ability, by doing an MRI on the leadership abilities of the teachers in your, in your school, or the supervisors and managers in your company, or the, the, the MRI of your parenting skills, of you and your spouse. Only then can you reveal how well you're doing, and more importantly, you can reveal areas you can fix, areas that need further rehabilitation and repair. But MRIs reveal tears in muscles. MRIs reveal tears in tendons. The same way MRIs in your leadership skills can reveal areas that you can fix to become a better leader. Right, so the obvious one is the last one, but the first two are important, right? Are you motivating your, your, your peop the people you're leading? Are you motivating them to learn and grow in the skill set you're teaching? Right? If you're a teacher of history, right, are you motivating your kids to understand why it's important for them to do well in history or do well in school in general? Right? If you're a, if you're a, a football coach, are you are you motivating your players to understand why it's important to do well in practice? Why it's important to study your your opponent? Because if you teach them how to study their opponent and you teach them how to how to run a pass play or how to pass protect, but don't motivate them to want to do that, you cannot sustain greatness. Right? If you're a, a personal fitness instructor, there are many personal fitness instructors who know more about anatomy than me. I studied finance in college. I have an MBA, a master's degree in finance, yet, yet very few instructors on a fitness level, get more out of their clients than I do. Why? Because they see me, they hear me, my stories, my life, they watch me and they're motivated by what I say and do to the point that what I teach them hits harder, lands more readily, right? So, so motivating the people you're teaching to want to learn and to want to grow, however you do that. However you can do it that fits your personality is imperative, right? And then relating, right? Relationships. Can you relate to the people you're teaching? If you can't, teaching them will be extremely hard. If you can't motivate your, 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 your pupils to want to learn what you're teaching them and you can't relate to them in their journey, it's extremely hard to be successful as a teacher, as a parent, as a coach, if I can't relate to what you're going through and sit down with you and talk through why I need you to do this and how I see why this part of this or that is challenging for you and can relate to you and understand and sympathize and empathize what you're going through. If I can't do that, I can't teach you. I can't motivate you. And then only last, after all that, after you motivate them, Right, after you relate to them, only then does the instruction work. So yes, you must instruct, you must teach, you must help, you must transfer knowledge. But that's the last step in the MRI. After you motivate, relate, and then you can instruct. All right, so, so don't let's look at, at, at the tangible outputs and the tangible things that you're trying to teach in a, from a book or a course or through skills, right? 
as a coach, as a mentor, as a teacher, as a as a faculty member, as a principal, as an administrator, understand that the x-ray is the first level. The MRI is the true measure. The MRI of your of your curriculum, of your teaching, of your system, of your of your of your behavior as a leader, the MRI will tell the true story and help you to grow as a leader. MRI, motivate, relate, and then instruct.